send you. All right, everybody. So here we go. We are going to go over a word problem, guys. So here's the word problem. So site A offers website hosting for $4.95 per month. $4.95 per month. Okay. That's for site A. Okay. I'm going to put A up here, guys. All right. And then it also costs $49.95 for the startup fee. Okay. So the startup fee is $49.99. So guys, if we were to set up an equation to calculate how much site A costs, okay, we could say the cost for site A would be the basic price of $49.95. You have to pay this regardless, guys. Everybody who goes with site A, they must pay $49.95 a month. Plus, they have to pay $4.95 per month to host whatever the company is, okay? So guys, this is the formula we would use to calculate how much a person would pay if they were to go ahead and go with site A, okay? So this is site A. Now, we're going to go to site B. Site B, guys, offers website hosting for $9.95 per month with no startup fee. Now B is going to just charge you guys. There's no startup fee, $9.95 per month, okay? Now the question is this, for how many months would this person need to keep the website so that, listen to the question guys, site B to be less than, uh, less expensive than site A. Okay, so we want to know how many months would site B have to keep their membership in order for site B to be less expensive than site A. Now, there's two ways you can approach this, guys. You can do an inequality or you could do an equation, okay? So if we're looking at the equation, which is the easiest of the two, basically you want to know when is site A going to equal to site B. When will A equal to B, okay? And then after you know how many months it takes for them to be equal, after those many months, guys, the price at B will be less than the price at A. The other way you can approach this is to actually create an inequality. You could do this instead. You could ask this question. When will site B, okay, the cost at site B, be less than, okay, this cost at site A, okay, less than, okay? So guys, for this problem right here, you've got an option. And depending on the type of question it is, okay, if it's multiple choice, you can use the multiple choice answers to figure it out. Now, if it is a full response question, for questions like this, guys, this is all about critical thinking. What are you thinking about and how are you approaching the problem? So essentially, if you can come up with a plan to solve the problem, even if it's not the right plan, okay, they will tell you. Now, do they want you to use an inequality or do they want you to go ahead and use an equation, Mimi? Inequality or equation? No? Hold on, let me check. All right. This was solving inequalities on both sides, so. Okay, okay, all right. So then for this one, we, gotta have, we have to write an inequality. So you want the price at, let me write it over here, B to be less than the price at A, okay? Now to calculate B, we do 9.95 per month. To calculate A, we do 49.95. So I'm just doing a quick substitution, sugar plum plus 4.95 per month, okay? So guys, essentially, what am I doing? I am using that information to create the inequality, okay? In the problem, it says, when will B be less than, less expensive than site A, 
So guys, this is your inequality right here. And I'm hoping everybody knows how to solve an inequality, okay? So we're gonna subtract the 4.95 M from both sides. By the way, guys, we can go ahead and do an equation for this too. The equation works, but when you express the answer, the answer needs to be an inequality. All right, guys, 995 a month minus 495 a month leaves you with 5M, okay? less than 49.95 so then you're going to grab your calculator guys and divide unfortunately i don't have a calculator over here guys okay i don't have a calculator so i need you guys to go ahead and take the 49.95 okay and divide it by five for me somebody do that Nine point ninety nine. Nine point ninety nine. We might as well round it to ten. I wanted to say ten because you know eventually they're going to ask you that question. All right, guys. So essentially, it's going to take ten months. Okay. The question was after how many months? After how, listen to the question, guys. After how many months? This is why I don't like the inequality version of this. After how many months would the price at B? be less than the price at eight, it would be after 10 months. Now, how do you verify this, guys? Listen, this is how you verify it. Let me go ahead and erase some of this so you guys could see. Okay, I'm gonna erase up here, guys. So if we were to take the 10, guys, and plug it in, okay, let's say we plug it into B. After 10 months, the cost for price um, for site B, after 10 months, it's gonna be 9.95 times 10, which is going to give you $99.50. You see how I'm plugging in that 10, guys? I'm plugging in 10 for M, okay? Now for site A, guys, after 10 months, it's gonna be $49.95 plus $4.95 times 10, which gives you $49.95 plus $49.95, I mean, uh, yeah, $49.50, I'm sorry. And then guys, you're gonna go ahead and add this up together. So somebody add this up for me, please. $49.95 plus $49.50, and what do you get, guys? What's the answer? What's the answer? $49.50 plus $49.95, I want it to be precise. Come on, guys, participate. Okay, this one turns out to be, okay, $99, $99, and how many cents? Oh, wait a minute. Okay, Chelsea, what you saying to me, Chelsea? I see you typing stuff in the Teams chat. Okay. Let me see here. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, that's right. Um, okay, Chelsea, I cannot go to the Teams chat right now. So you wanna turn on your mic and talk to me, Chelsea? Oh, you were just showing me. Okay, all right. Um, well, I can't see it right now. Okay, Chelsea, if you're gonna show me, you'll have to show me later. Okay, guys, so what just happened? Yes. Guys, at the 10 months, basically, the prices are equal to each other, okay? So, if at the 10 months, the prices are equal to each other, and you want the price of B to be less than, okay, the price of A, then for this one right here, guys, it has to be less than the 10. Let me see. Whenever you can, it's fine. It was just, okay, all right, gotcha, gotcha. All right, I got you, sweetie pie. All right, perfect. Okay, so how are you feeling about this one, sweetie pie? Anything less than 10 will work because at 10 months, they're right about the same amounts, all right? So for example, if you were to do five months out, five times 10 is 50, okay? Now, if you do it with plan A, plan A would be 49.95 and then plus 
five times that extra five dollars per month that's going to be about 75 dollars so at five months okay at five months are you listening sugar plum at five months okay the price of b is going to be less than a so anything anything let me see it was written down here guys anything less than here let me write it on the side anything less than 10 any number of months less than 10 will keep the price of B less than the price of A. Now, when you do this type of problem, be careful. Sometimes it's a good idea to check these problems. That's what I was doing up here. Because when we plug in that 10 months, okay, if we say it's equal to 10 months, notice guys, the price of B is 99.50, while the price of A is 99.45. So, which means that 10 months, actually B is slightly more than A. You don't want it to be at 10 months. You want it to be less than 10 months. Now, guys, quick question for you. Can you use decimal answers for this one? Can you have like 10.5 for M? Or can you have, let me not say 10.5. Let me do 9.5 because we want numbers less than 10. Can we use 9.5 months, guys? Okay, Mimi says yes. What about the rest of you? What do you guys think? By the way, guys, when you send me the answers, they just come to me. Nobody else is reading them, okay? So you don't have to worry about it. Now, Mimi, here's the thing. They're charging you every month. They're charging you by the month. So if you have 9.5, that would mean nine and a half months. Either they charge you for a whole month or they don't charge you for the month at all. So if you say 99.5 months, that would not work because that 0.5 is half a month. And they're not charging half a month, they're charging for a full month. So if you were to use nine and a half, okay, you would have to go to 10 months. If you were to do 9.2, if you were to get 9.2 for the answer, you would have to go to 10 months. Anything over nine, you have to round it up. It has to be a whole number answer. You cannot have a decimal answer for this one. I know, you guys weren't expecting that one. Guys, I like questions, ask questions. Turn on your microphone and speak to me, okay? I love, love questions. Chelsea, I'm looking forward to it, okay? After we're done, you're gonna have to show that to me again, okay, Chelsea, just hang on, all right? Um, let me see, Mimi, talk to me. What do you think? Do you understand the problem? I mean, I, I understand. Okay, you, you weren't too sure about it. You were a little hesitant there. Okay, tell me what you didn't quite get and if you want me to elaborate on something for you. Oh, there's, there's nothing to elaborate. I think I understand. Yeah, so, I understand. Uh-huh. I understand. Okay. I know how to do it. It's just the word problems in the wording. Um, it's just how it, how the wording approaches. I just needed to understand how to know what to do in a situation like that. Ah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Now you notice as I was going through the problem, I was only picking out certain information, the information, the critical information that I need to solve the problem. Now, if we go back over that, what was the critical information where it says 495 per month plus 49.95? That's critical information. That was for site A. And for site B, it says 995 a month. That's critical information. You need that to be able to solve the problem. And then the next piece of information that was critical to solving this problem was after the question, okay? By the way, Mimi, after you're done solving the problem, you need to go back and read the question again to see if the answer makes sense within the context of the problem, okay? So again, the question is this, and the question is critical information because you gotta know what you're solving for. What answer are you looking for? After how many months would, I don't even need to know the person. All I need to know is after how many months would the website for site B be less expensive than site A? That's all I need to know. So all that extraneous information, you don't need it. 
if you want to cross it out on the test, if you want to highlight it and get rid of it. Now, when you're highlighting on the test, what I would suggest you highlight is just the critical information. Like in this problem right here, I would highlight the $4.95 per month plus $49.95. I would highlight the $9.95 per month. I would also highlight that question, how many months would the website for site B be less expensive than site A? I would highlight that so I can focus exactly on the information that I need to solve the problem. And then solve the problem. Once you get your answer, go back, check your answer and see if it makes sense within the context of the problem. I, Mimi, I think you're gonna be okay. You just have, the, you have to have the confidence that you can do this, okay? And going through word problems requires a lot of critical thinking skills. It requires a lot of brainstorming, okay? So one of the things you can do is to try and work out the problem in your head, work it out in your brain first, come up with a plan, a plan in your head. And then once you come up with a plan in your head, then you go ahead and execute the plan on paper, okay? So I am going to go ahead and stop right here, guys, with this problem. I'm gonna clear it out. And then I'm going to address some quadratics now because I know some of you had issues with quadratics, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that right now. F of X is equal to X plus eight times x minus, well, actually, I think it's the other way around. Hold on a second. You know what? No, let me not do this one because, guys, I want to do a different one from yesterday, okay? Um, so let's do x plus 5, okay, times, let me see here, x minus 3. I'm making this up as I go along. Let me see here. That should be a good one. Okay, guys. So, uh, Brendan, are you there, sweetie pie? So here's your question, Brendan, all right? Now, can you guys tell that this is a quadratic equation? No? It is. Okay, how do you know it is, Mimi? Um, with the question that Ms. Patterson gave was like her recent homework, it had those. Mm -hmm. And um, it's easy to use x and 5. So you use x to do x times. It's kind of hard to explain, but you use the x to times the x in the other parentheses and the x for the negative 3. And then you use um, the 5 for the, five for the x and then the 5. It's like you multiply with, within. There you each. go. You're doing really well, Mimi. Seriously, you're doing really well. You know your stuff. Now it's just a matter of building your confidence level to say, okay, I know this stuff, okay? What you're talking about there, Mimi, is multiplying the two binomials together so you could actually see that there's a quadratic in here. There's a quadratic term. How do we know it's a quadratic term? If it's got x squared in there, it's a quadratic term. So basically what you're talking about, Mimi, is foiling, foil. Um, wait a minute, my pen is not writing, guys. Hold on a second. FOIL. Have you guys heard of the word FOIL? It's an acronym, by the way, FOIL. Yeah, I it's, yeah, I know what it's called. I think it's like, I, it's like a very long-term type multiplication. Okay, so this is basically a mnemonic device that people use to remember how to multiply two binomials, okay? So the FOIL is an acronym, and it stands for First, as in multiply the first two terms together, which is what you were doing, okay? Multiply the x's together, so you get x squared. Then the O stands for outer or outside, outside terms together. The outside terms are the x and the three, just like you're saying, Mimi. That'll give you a negative three x. And then, Brendan, are you paying attention, Brendan? I stands for inner or inside, the inside terms, the inner terms. So that's the five and the X, which gives you five X. And then the last, the L stands for the last two terms, okay? So for this one, you do five times negative three, which gives you a negative 15. Now, we're not quite done yet. You have to combine these two terms together, the negative five X and, I mean, the negative three X and five X. So when you combine them together, this produces f of x 
is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. And there you go. Yes, Mimi, very good. So now, what do you notice, Brendan? There's a quadratic right here, okay? We have an x squared term, so it's a quadratic. Yeah, second degree equations are called quadratics. What's the graph of a quadratic called, guys? The parabola. Very good, Mimi, a parabola, okay? Guys, listen, you can type it in the chat or you can turn on your mic and tell me, okay, guys? So now, guys, listen to this question, okay? If they were to ask you to solve this one, when they ask you to solve a quadratic, guys, what they're looking for are the x-intercepts or the zeros, the roots, uh, solutions, you can use that too. So guys, basically, wherever the graph intersects the x-axis, it's a solution. We call it a zero, or we could we call it a root. Zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts, they all mean the exact same thing, okay? The exact same thing. Yes. All right? So guys, listen to this. If they ask you to find a solution to this problem, okay? The original problem right here, all we have to do, guys, um... Oh, Mimi, I see you, Mimi, but Mimi, I think you're talking about something different, okay? Hold on a second, Mimi, all right? If they ask you to find the roots or the zeros, guys, all you have to do is take the original problem, x plus 5, and set it equal to 0, and then solve it. When you have an equation like this, can you guys eyeball it and tell me what the answers are, what the solutions are? x plus 5 times x minus 3 equal to 0. Are you guys able to tell me? Like how you want us to figure it out, like how you just use the FOIL method or? No. Okay. When I say to find the zeros, the answers, the roots, the solutions, I'm talking about what number makes the parentheses equal to 0. That's what I'm talking about, okay? It, it would be the, it would be the X's plus five, X's plus numerals, right? Uh-huh, yes. So what would the answers be, Glendon? It, it would either be net X, negative X, oh, Sorry, I I use I um I almost I almost said negative five. Okay. Plus five and negative three times plus three. Okay. All right. You you almost got it. We just need to polish that just a little bit, okay? All right. So essentially, when you're looking for the zeros, you're asking this question, Brendan. What number plus five will make that parentheses equal to zero? So essentially, you want the opposite of it. So for this one right here, it would be x equals 2, negative 5, okay? That's one of the answers. That's one of the solutions. Now, why do we want this to be 0? Because if you multiply by 0, you get 0. We want numbers that will make this equal to 0. Okay, so when we go to the second one, what number, okay, what value minus 3 in the second parentheses will make it to 0? What number in the second parentheses minus three will make it equal to zero? The other one is going to be three. So yes, Mimi, you are absolutely right. The solutions, the zeros, the roots, the x-intercepts. You notice I keep saying all these words. They all mean the same thing, guys. So the solution for this problem, guys, and its original state right there, the solutions would be the positive three, I'm going to erase some of this stuff so I can write it down. Okay, let me erase it right here, guys. Okay, so your solutions for this problem are negative three, I mean positive three, negative five. And that's it. Those are the numbers. When you plug them in, that will make this equation equal out to zero. All right, now let me address the graphing, guys. Let's go back to the graphing. All right. 
first question for you guys on the graphing portion. Which way would this parabola open, guys? If we were to go ahead and graph this second degree quadratic equation, which direction would it open? Would it open up or would it open down, guys? You tell me. I'm guessing open up. Okay, why does it open up, Sugar Plum? Because um, we can figure out through the x if it's not negative or not. Okay, now you have to specify which x, okay? I know you know the answer, but I, I want you to specify which x. Which x are we looking at? Because we've got two different x's. We've got an x squared, and Our then x. we've got the 2x. Which one do we look at to determine if it's going to open up or down? Our x squared. Yes. And it's, and it's a positive one, so I'm guessing opening up. Yes. And Mimi, don't guess. Just say it is opening up, okay? That's part of building your confidence level in math, okay? Even if you're wrong, Mimi, it's okay. But feel confident about your answers. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get with it. It's just like the word problems. The more you do it, okay, with confidence, the better you'll feel about these problems. And when your confidence is good at doing something, you tend to do better with it, okay? So work on the confidence level. Okay, so you're absolutely right, Mimi. You're getting the right answers. You just got to build the confidence to add to it, okay? So yes, Mimi, uh, when x squared is positive, the graph opens up, Brendan. When x squared is negative, Chelsea, it opens down. So this one right here is a positive x squared. So definitely this graph is going to open up, okay? If we were to graph it, it's going to open up. Now, guys, the next question is this. <clears throat> If the graph is going to open up, guys, what is the vertex? What's the vertex coordinate of the graph? What's the vertex coordinates, okay? So to find the vertex, guys, because this form right here that's given to us is in the general form, <clears throat> we're going to use the formula, guys. I don't know what's wrong with my pen, okay? We're going to use the formula, x equals to the opposite of b, over two times a to find the x value of the vertex. Now, can somebody tell me what the a value is? What's the a value based on the equation? What is a equal to, guys? Two, I mean. While you're at it, tell me what the b value is, okay? I want a and b. <clears throat> Brendan, come on, Diana, come on. Chelsea, I didn't forget about you guys. You guys can what join is in the chat too. Wouldn't the a value be? Oh wait, I'm, I am overthinking. Don't overthink it. I, I was think I almost I was thinking about the b value. What is the b value? Uh, wouldn't the b value b value be? Wait, that's not right. Okay. You're good, Mimi. That's good. Ashley, what about you? Yes, Mimi, that's right. I mean, Chelsea. I said Ashley. Chelsea, where you at, Chelsea? Diana, I haven't heard from you. How you doing, Diana? I'm okay. All right. Well, you need to participate, young lady. All right, guys, listen. Let me go to the side and explain something to you. I'm going to have to erase part of this, okay? <clears throat> when you are given a quadratic, guys, the general form of the quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. So, guys, in other words, the number in front of x squared, the coefficient of x squared is a. The coefficient of x is b. And then c is called your constant, okay? So guys, in the case of this problem, when I ask you what is the value of a, well, you look at your equation, look at your equation right here, okay? What number is in front of the x squared? What's the coefficient of x squared? That's the question, guys. What's the coefficient of x squared? 
when I ask you for the A value? Well, it doesn't seem like it has one, but yes, it does. Whenever you have a variable with no coefficient, the coefficient is understood to be one. So the A value is one. What's the B value? The B value is the coefficient of X, the number in front of X. So for this one right here, the B value is going to be two. You got it, Gwendolyn? All right, guys, so now we know A, we know B, we can go into the formula and plug everything in. So let's plug them in, guys. So we're gonna do the opposite of B, B is positive, so it's gonna become a negative, over two times A, A is one. We're gonna simplify it, so we get negative two over two, which gives us a negative one. That's the X value of the vertex, guys. But now we need to find the Y value, okay? We just found X. X is negative one, okay? So to find the Y value, guys, we're gonna go ahead and go back into our little equation right here and just plug it in, okay? Now, guys, remember, F of X and Y are exactly the same thing. So if you don't wanna use F of X notation, you can always use Y. So here, oops, ooh, ooh, what happened here? Oh, so damn, okay. I don't know what happened there, guys. Oh, so damn, okay. <laughs> all right guys i need to figure out what's going on oh oh my ipad is acting wonky all right okay well i might have a little problem here guys listen i love technology but i'm not really good at utilizing technology let me see where's my text box okay so let's get out of the text box okay so there we go I think that G is going to remain on the screen until I clear it up. So guys, I'm finding the Y value of the vertex. The X value of the vertex is negative one. To find the Y value, I'm gonna take negative one, go back into this equation right here. Wherever I find X, I'm gonna plug it in, guys. So negative one squared plus two times negative one, and then minus 15. So guys, let's go ahead and simplify this out. Negative one squared is positive one. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, minus 15. You go ahead and combine like terms. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 15 is negative 16. So Mimi, what you gave me earlier, Mimi, was the vertex sugar plum. Negative 1 comma negative 16. That's the vertex Mimi. Mimi, are you there? Yeah, I am. Okay, so good job, Mimi, good job. All right, guys, so I need to erase some of this because it's a little messy over here. So let me erase some of this, okay? And then we'll continue. Hold on a second, guys. I'm gonna erase some because there's too much information on here. Let me erase this one too. I'm erasing, oops, I went too far back. Bam, okay, there we go. And I'm gonna erase down here too. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. I'm erasing. I don't want to have to rewrite the problem over again. That's why I did not want to erase the entire board. Okay, guys. So now, sugar plums, listen to this. Okay, listen to this. You ready, sweetie pies? You ready? The vertex is at negative 1, comma, negative 16. All right, guys. Here's some questions for you. All right, here you go. Guys, what is the axis of symmetry? What's the axis of symmetry? Everybody participate. Diana, you need to participate. Mimi got it already. Brendan, come on, Brendan. Chelsea, come on, Chelsea. Chelsea, Sorry. are you Sorry. not? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sometimes I try to unmute and, it, and for some reason I, I accidentally double clicks. Okay, well, you can type your answers in the chat too, Brendan. All right, you don't have to. Oh, yes. The chat does appears like that there's nothing being at, the, at all. Oh, there is. The only problem is it's coming directly to me. So oh, that makes sense. Private. Yeah. So when you type something in there, I see it. Nobody else can see it. Yeah. All right. So, Chelsea, how you doing, Chelsea? Chelsea, are you passing your math class, Chelsea? Chelsea, are you there, Chelsea? 
Chelsea's probably up there having a blast. <gasps> Chelsea, we got to get this together, girl. Are you paying attention? Pay attention, Chelsea. Okay? You got two more weeks to work on your grade for this quarter, Chelsea. Okay? Chelsea, you might have to do some intense tutoring, sweetie pie. I meet on Tuesday and Wednesday with my students. So you might want to come on both Tuesday and Wednesday, Chelsea, so we can get this thing straightened out, okay? You and I are going to have a talk after this is all over, okay, Chelsea? Axis of symmetry, guys. You ready? What's the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry, by the way, guys, we did say that this graph is going to open up like this. And then the yeah. vertex is going to be located right here at the bottom, okay? Now, guys, listen. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes straight through the middle of the graph and intersects the graph at the vertex. So it shares the same x value with the vertex. So the axis of symmetry equation would be x equals 2, negative 1x. By the way, you can also use that same formula, x equals 2, the opposite of b over 2a, right there, guys, to find the equation of the axis of symmetry x. Yeah. Okay? Any questions, guys? With the axis of symmetry, with the axis of symmetry, the vertices are, are, are still in different places, correct? With the axis of symmetry, the vertex is what? The, no, with the axis of symmetry, finding the vertices, oh, uh, wait, no, wait, I'm thinking, I'm over, wait, I'm thinking about the wrong thing for a second, sorry. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. All right, guys. So, any questions about the axis of symmetry? All right, very good, Diana, very good. What about you, Chelsea, do you understand? Chelsea, I'm trying to help out, but you gotta talk to me so I can help you out, okay, Chelsea? All right, guys, so then, kinda, Chelsea, turn on that mic and talk to me. Tell me what you need help with. Tell me what you want me to clarify. Tell me what part of this you don't understand. <coughs> Chelsea, I can hear you. You can turn on your mic. My mic is not working. I, did I just heard you, Chelsea. I thought I just heard you. Are you just going to type? Okay, that's fine. You can type. Okay, in the meantime, while Chelsea is typing, guys, here's a big question for you. Does this problem have a max or min value? Does it have a maximum or a minimum value? Come on, guys, drop it in the chat. Type it in the chat for me, guys. Does it have a max or minimum value? Mimi gave me an answer. Diana, what about you? What's the answer? Brendan said, yes, Brendan, I see you. Diana, what about you? Come on, Diana. Diana, very good. So it seems like all of you got it, okay? Yes, guys, because the vertex is at the bottom, we call that the valley. This one does have a minimum value. And what you have to remember is, guys, the minimum is always the y value at the vertex. The minimum or the maximum is always the y value at the vertex, OK? So um, now, guys, listen. Here's the next question for you guys. Listen to this. This is hard. What is the range, guys? What's the range? What's the range? I don't understand where you do five and three. Are you multiplying? Yeah, five times X is five X. And then X times negative three gives you negative three X. Oh, Diana, you're saying I'm not sure? Try, Diana, try. Okay, Diana, and everybody else, what's the domain for this problem, guys? What's the domain? Look, Chelsea, we just multiplied these two right here, Chelsea. That's 5x. We multiplied these two over here, Chelsea. 
and that's going to give us negative 3x, okay? And then when you combine them together, you get 2x. Um, miss, the range, wouldn't it be y is more than or equal to negative 16? Wow, very good, Mimi, very good. You're absolutely right. Y is greater or equal to negative 16. Very good, Chelsea. I mean, not Chelsea, Mimi. Very good. And wow. wouldn't the domain be negative infinity or real, all real numbers? Negative yes. infinity and infinity? Yes. The domain would be all real numbers. And if you were to write that in a notation, it would be negative infinity to positive infinity. Very good. Okay, so Diana, Brandon, Chelsea, let me explain how you find the range, okay? The range, guys, has to do with the vertical part of the graph or the y values on the graph. The y values, they go up and down. So when we talk about the range, we're looking at the lowest y value on the graph up to the largest possible y value on the graph. Well, we just found out that this problem has a minimum. So the lowest y value on the graph for this one is going to be at the vertex. What is the smallest y value on this graph at the vertex? Negative 16. Everything else is larger than, bigger than, above the negative 16. Everything, all the other y values are bigger than negative 16, greater than negative 16, above the negative 16. So for this one, guys, listen, this is how you express the range, okay? Now, uh, Mimi was giving us some of it in end of notation, but you don't have to do the end of notation. It's good to know that stuff though, okay? So, any questions, guys? No? All right, I feel like I should do another one with you guys. It's already 6.10. Do you guys wanna do another one, a quick one? Um, Miss, wouldn't, didn't you say that you was gonna show how to stretch the line? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can do that too. Okay. Uh, we're talking about the transformation. I was talking to your teacher this morning and uh, Miss Patterson, both of you, I mean, all of you don't have Miss Patterson. Okay. But I was talking to Miss Patterson and she was talking about vertical shifting, vertical shifting. Okay. And for the vertical shifting, this is where the graph is moving up or down, up or down guys. Okay. So to move the graph up or down, guys, okay, because we're talking about quadratics, okay, f of x equals to x squared, uh, you look at the outside of the quadratic. If you have plus some number over here, it's going to move the graph up. So this number right here, whatever it is, it's going to move the graph up. However, if you have a quadratic x squared minus c, that minus c is going to shift the graph down, okay? So plus C moves it up, minus C moves it down. So guys, what am I talking about? Here's what I'm talking about, everybody, okay? If I graph F of X is equal to X squared, this is what the graph would look like, guys. A standard quadratic graph with the vertex at zero, zero would look something like this. Now, if I were to change this to f of x plus 2, f of x equals to x squared plus 2, guys. Because of that plus 2, that's going to move the graph up to units. So when I sketch the graph, guys, the graph is going to look something like this. I am going to count up along the x-axis, I mean the y-axis, two units, 1, 2, because the 2 is shifting the graph up and then plot my coordinate point and move the graph two units up like that, okay? Now, guys, you have to be really good with this stuff to understand it, okay? I know it seems easy right now, but there's more to it than that. Uh, okay, Diana, thank you for coming, Sugar Plum. Have a good one, and I will see you next week. Thanks for attending. All right, guys, so here's the last one, okay? This one right here, if I have f of x is equal to x squared minus 3, that minus 3 is going to move the graph down, guys. So essentially, rather than having the vertex at 0, 0, the vertex will shift down to negative 3. So then the new graph would look something like this, guys. 
All right. So I am going to give you a specific point, okay? So guys, here's an example. Let's say I have the coordinate point. Okay, I'm trying to write on here. It's not writing, okay? Let's say I have the coordinate point, 2 comma 4 over here, guys, in the original function. If I'm shifting the graph up two units, all the y values on the second graph, they're going to be shifted up two units. So the same point on this graph, guys, will go up two units. So then the y value on this one is going to be at positive 6. Ooh, wait a minute. I didn't change the color. I was trying to change the color. Okay. So that same one, guys, that same one, okay, that was at 2 comma 4, because of the plus 2 here, it's going to be at 2 comma 6, okay? And then on this one right here, guys, that same point that was at 2 comma 4, because we're moving it down 3 units, that same point is going to land somewhere over here at 2 comma negative, I mean, not negative, positive 1. Okay, so guys, what just happened? By moving it up two, I add two to the four. By moving it down three, I subtract three from four, and that's how I'm getting this one over here. So guys, essentially, when you're doing the vertical transformation, every single point on the graph is being affected, okay? So that's going up and down, shifting the graph up and down, okay? So now guys, the stretching and shrinking. All right. So the stretching and shrinking, this one is on the outside of the graph, guys. It's the number in front of x squared that determines whether the graph is stretched, which means it becomes thin, or whether it shrinks, which means it becomes a wide graph. So you look at your A value, guys. If the A value is greater than 1, it's going to be stretching. Think of a rubber band, guys. Think of a rubber band. You're stretching a rubber band. When you stretch a rubber band, what happens to the rubber band? It becomes very thin, okay? When you stretch a rubber band, it becomes thin, all right? Now, guys, I am going to show this to you on the calculator, okay? On the other hand, guys, if your A value is less than 1 but greater than 0, Okay, so which means it's a decimal, or it's a fraction, and between zero and one, the graph is going to be shrinking. It shrinks vertically, and when the graph shrinks, guys, it becomes wide. Think of it like this. It's opening up, okay? Like, um, what, what's an example of something that would open up like this? Like a flower opening, guys, okay? When a flower is opening, it just stretches out like this, and it becomes wide, okay? So it becomes wide open. All right, so guys, what's an example? If I have f of x is equal to, oh, Shazam, there I go again, guys. Okay, let's try that one more time. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, if I have f of x is equal to 5x squared, guys, that's going to be a very thin graph because every single value on this graph is going to be multiplied by 5. But if I have something such as f of x is equal to um, 1 half x squared, it's going to shrink the graph vertically. Now, so when you do it, is everything affected by 5? Yes, everything. So, for example, Mimi, remember the first one I was talking about? I said uh, 2 comma 4. If I were to take that same 2 and I plug it in here, uh, 2 squared would give me 4, and then I multiply it by 5, this would become 20. You see? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, Chelsea, I'm sorry, Chelsea. Okay, very good. So you see how the 4 is now 20 because I multiplied it by 5, okay? Now, what about the half? If I do the half, okay, if I plug it into the second equation, 2 squared is 4. What's half of 4? Two. So when I do the half, look at what happens. If I compare it to this one right here, it went from four to two. What just happened? We just cut it in half. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, very good. So what I'm going to do now, guys, quickly, I'm going to see if I could do this and show this to you on the calculator because we have 
um, a, all right, there we go. Okay, we have a calculator that is internet-based. I'm gonna see if I could pull up the calculator so I could go ahead and show you guys this on the calculator because it makes more sense on the calculator, guys, okay? So give me a moment. I'm gonna pull it up for you, the Desmos graphing calculator. It's internet-based, guys, so you can use it whenever you want to use it, okay? Desmos graphing calculator. So all you have to do, guys, go online, type in Desmos, and it'll pop up, okay? Now, my computer is taking a long time for it to pop up, so I'm not quite sure if it's going to show up. Oh, there it is. It did. It did. It did. It did. Okay, let me see. Oh, I can't erase these. What? Okay, that's not the one I want then. Let's leave this one. Hold on a second, guys. I'm gonna do it in a minute. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. And this is the last thing we're doing and then we'll be done, guys, okay? Well, it's not popping up, guys. It's not popping up. Maybe this thing is not going to cooperate with me today. Normally, I have good luck with this. Okay, let's see if it pops up. Let's see. Okay, I'm trying to get it to pop up, guys. My computer's slow, by the way. Oh, okay. Let's try that again. All right. Let's see if it popped up. Oh, no, it's not popping up, guys. All right. If it's not going to pop up, it is on the screen, but it won't let me share. Let me see. Oh, let's do it from here. Okay, let's see. <gasps> guys, I think it's going to come up. All right. Yay. Raise your hand if you can see this. Actually, say something. <laughs> Just say something. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, very good. So, guys, when you're graphing on here... Listen, all you have to do is go on here and start typing, okay? Y, you can't put, well, you can put f of x, but it's easier for you to type in y equals to, okay? So I'm going to do x, and then I'm going to hit shift, the number six, so I can get to the power, x squared. This is what x squared looks like, guys, x squared graph, a parabola, okay? So if I wanted to uh, stretch the graph, make it thin, make, get it closer to the y-axis, I put a leading coefficient in front of the x squared. Did you guys see that? Okay, let me erase it. You see how wide it is? Now, once I put the five in there, you see how thin it is? Let me put a 10 in there. Okay, you see how much thinner it's gotten? Yeah. Now, if I wanted to make the graph wider, I have to change the a value, the number in front of x squared, into a smaller number, a number that is less than one, but greater than zero. Like, 0.5. You see how wide it got, guys? Okay, let's go to a smaller number. 0.3. Look at this, guys. 0.2. Let's do 0.1. Give me a number. Somebody give me a decimal. Any decimal, guys. Come on, guys. All right, I'll throw one in there for you. 0 0.05, look at that guys, you see that? So the smaller the value, the closer that value gets to zero, the wider the graph becomes. And then one more thing I wanna show you is the vertical transformation. When you're moving the graph up and down guys, when you're moving the graph up and down, look at this guys. If I add a plus two, no, that's not a plus sign. Okay, plus two, you see how it shifted the graph up to two? So here, you see that point on there, zero comma two. All right, let me change it to four. Look at that, guys. Now, the new vertex is at zero comma four. You see that? Now, if I wanted to shift it down, I could do a minus three. You see how it's right here, guys, at negative three? Look at that, zero comma negative three. What if it was at uh, negative 10? Look at that, guys. Way at the bottom over here, okay? So that negative on the outside, that negative 10, is moving the graph down. So guys, listen, the Desmos calculator is internet-based. Anybody can go on Google and Google this, and you can go ahead and play around with the Desmos calculator. I'm going to stop here, guys, because I've been going at this for a while, so I'm going to stop right here.
and in the meantime,